Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we are here primarily for you, of course. We are here to share information with you, information that we think that may be helpful for you to create a better life, a better quality of health. There's no reason for you to suffer for any disease and no reason for you to take drugs in most cases. Yes, there's times when drugs are necessary. But for all the common conditions that we currently are saddled with, there's no reason to take drugs in most cases. Now, I'm, t- I'm not telling you to go off your drugs. That's strictly between you and your physician. And if you were to go off your drug, I would caution you not to, but first of all, consult with your physician. But much of the research that I share with you on a weekly basis can replace drugs. And today, we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes. And there are many drugs prescribed for controlling blood sugar level and lowering A1C. There's tons of TV advertising for these drugs. But I'm going to introduce to you a natural herb that is more effective than drugs. And it's more effective in lowering A1C. So we'll talk about that as well today. But that's true for almost all conditions like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, inflammation. There are natural herbs that are more effective as an anti-inflammatory than drugs. And then you get a bonus on top of that as all of these natural herbal alternatives do not have side effects, or very minimally. So there are no dangers in taking a natural alternative. Drugs have tremendous amount of side effects. When you listen to a one-minute commercial for a drug, there's only about 10 or 20 seconds of that 60-second commercial that talks about the benefits of their drug, and about 40 minutes about the side effects. You ever stop to think of that? What are your risks in taking a drug? What are the side effects? And will you end up taking more drugs to treat the side effects of the first drug? In many cases, that's true. Drugs are not the answer. The real answer and the real basis of your health foundation is food. Most of our diseases today that are being treated by drugs are caused by lifestyle choices. That means we make choices every day. And the choice we choose for the food we eat are not based on nutrition, based on pleasure, what tastes good. All the carbohydrates and sugar are responsible for most of our diseases. Not fat, not protein, but the American diet is almost primarily made up of carbohydrates and sugar, starch which all turns into sugar. Most Americans are sugar addicted. And they are many desserts, junk food, coffee drinks. All the pleasures are laden with sugar. The average amount of sugar consumed by an American today is about three quarters of a pound of sugar per day. Can you imagine that? 
Some people might be up to 300 pounds of sugar per year. That's hard to believe, right? But it's true. Because all that sugar you're eating is hidden in the processed, prepackaged garbage food that has very little nutrition. So we're just trying to give you a warning, I guess, trying to help you understand that your diet fuels your body and makes you healthy or unhealthy. Diseases do not come because you're unfortunate or God is mad at you or just, you know, you're just unlucky. Now why do I have this disease? Why do I have to take these drugs? You don't have to. You shouldn't have to. Change your diet. Then add supplements if necessary. So today our featured topic is diabetes. It's a pandemic. Then we're going to talk about how to have a healthier thyroid. And women, you really need more carotenoids. And then we'll talk about how to improve kids' health going back to school. And some of the warning signs of cancer. And what's the problem with Tylenol being used for pain relief? Well, we'll tell you. And we'll talk about vitamin A as a nutrient of the day. We have lots to talk about today, and we'll get on with that in just a moment with many of these other topics. But today, let's talk about diabetes. 30 to 40 million people have type 2 diabetes, and it's strictly optional. Optional. Not guaranteed. You can choose it or not choose it. Truly, but one in three Americans have high blood sugar levels and escalated A1C levels. The current prevalence of diabetes type 2 is one in 10 Americans. 90 to 95 percent of these are type 2 diabetes. Type 1 is a defect regarding the pancreas of the individual that cannot produce enough insulin to keep the sugar in control, to manage the blood sugar level. They do not produce insulin. So thank the top scientists who found a way to make synthetic insulin to save diabetics' life. But type 2 is another form of high blood sugar. But those people still make insulin, but not enough to match the amount of sugar being consumed. Because we've gone from a few pounds of sugar per year per individual to over two or 300 pounds of sugar per individual per year. So that's a tremendous amount of sugar. And we don't have the ability in our bodies to produce enough insulin so the cells become resistant to the amount of insulin. Insulin is just a hormone that shuttles the sugar into the cells to be burned for energy. But we're overeating sugar. It wasn't meant to be eaten in the quantities that we're eating. So one in three American adults and one in four kids, get this, kids, one in four kids have high blood sugar levels 
called pre-diabetes. If they don't change, they're going to be a diabetic. It's not technically high enough to be officially called diabetes, but still higher than normal. 70% of people with pre-diabetes will see their blood sugar levels continue to increase until they develop type 2 diabetes. We just have too much sugar in our bloodstream. Not enough insulin to manage the level of blood sugar. So while they are not type 1 diabetics, there are people that are walking around today with a very high blood sugar level, but they truly are not diabetics, but they are classed as a type 2 because it's similar to type 1, but not really a full diabetes. So if we have a high blood sugar level, that's because we have a lot of sugar in our bloodstream. We have a lot of sugar in our diet. We have a lot of sugar in our bodies. So what else would you have but high blood sugars? Pre-diabetes. Those that aren't classified as diabetics yet, but they're on the trend to be a diabetic type 2. And being a pre-diabetic increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, and kidney disease. So what is the cure for high blood sugar? Well, drugs, of course, they do manage and lower blood sugar levels, but is it necessary to use a drug? Drugs have side effects. So do you really want to take a drug? Well, there's an herb called Hintonia lactiflora. Hintonia, H-I-N-T-O-N-I-A, Hintonia. It's native to Mexico and Central America. But it was discovered by a group of scientists in Germany. And they began research on this herb 70 years ago. It's been known in Europe and especially in Germany. And I think back almost 70 years that this herb has been researched for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. It's ideal for people with pre-diabetes. A fasting blood sugar level between 100 and 125. Not classified yet as a type 2 diabetic. So this will help to manage pre-diabetes. Don't wait until you are classified as a diabetic Prevention is the cure for most diseases. So if you have a A1C level between 5.7 and 6.4, that's the time to begin using Hintonia. And it's so important to use as a prevention the Hintonia, like the flora. You can use it, yes, to manage blood sugar levels. Lower the blood sugar levels in the bloodstream. Lower A1C. But if you begin early, it prevents type 2 diabetes. And it gives you great benefits. In fact, just tiny reductions of blood sugar and A1C, excuse me, A1C levels will give you great benefits, huge benefits. Just a 1% decrease in A1C levels can lead to 19% reduction in the risk of cataracts. That's huge. 
and a 16% reduction in the risk of heart failure and a 43% less risk of amputation or death from peripheral vascular disease. Here's a study. In the year 2014, 178 people with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes received Intonia lactiflora. In addition to any treatment they were already receiving, even if they were on a drug or an oral anti-diabetic or even on insulin, they were still given the herb Intonia. After eight months, now that sounds like a long time, eight months, eight months of treatment with a natural alternative. But it takes time to regulate the blood sugar level and lower the A1C level. So don't take a, a bottle of Hintonia, maybe with 100 capsules, and expect miracles to happen. When we get into a dire situation where we have a high blood sugar level and a very high A1C level, that didn't come in a few days, few weeks, few months. It takes time to create a dire situation. And it'll take time to reverse that. So eight months is not a lifetime. But in eight months, on using Hintonia, significant improvements occurred. The A1C levels improved by an average of 10.4%. The fasting glucose improved by an average of 23.3%. And the blood sugar level after eating, because that's when it spikes, because most, most people are eating sugar, sugar, sugar at their meals, or food that converts to sugar very easily, like starch and carbohydrates. So right after a meal, there usually is a huge spike caused by the amount of glucose in our daily meals. Now, that glucose spikes fast but it was improved by an average of 24.9% that it would not spike. Of the 114 subjects, people, who were taking some kind of medication, when the study began, by the end of the study, 40% were able to reduce their medication and 10%, 10% no longer needed to take any medication. They were able to control it by diet and Hintonia. What do you know about Hintonia? Well, first of all, it's extremely safe. Research going back to the 1950s find it is very well tolerated with no significant adverse effects. And the sooner you take it, the sooner you use it, the better it works. If you're just a mild diabetic or a mild pre-diabetic with just a little bit of excessive blood sugar levels, that's when it really works to get it under control faster, more effectively. So the sooner it is used, the better it works. The best results were seen in people with mild to moderate increases in blood sugar levels. In clinical trials, human trials, Hintonia was used safely in combination with insulin or other oral anti-diabetic medications. 
to always keep your doctor informed. If you're taking something natural that has an effect on the drug, let your doctor know what you're doing. And I hopefully that you and your doctor allows you to take Hintonia and you can monitor your results. If I were a doctor, I would care what you took, if it were safe, effective, it was not harmful in any way. I would, I would think that would be extremely wonderful if you could take something natural that wouldn't have side effects. Drugs all come with side effects. So the dosage for Antonia is 100 milligrams of Antonia. And it provides 20 milligrams of polyphenols, which we have talked about in the past, one to three times daily. And it also is combined with essential vitamins and minerals that are really specific for lowering blood sugar levels. So, Hintonia, if you are classified as a type 2 diabetic, if the doctor has told you that you have a high blood sugar level, but you are not classified yet as a type 2 diabetic, if you have a A1C level creeping up slowly, not yet a type 2 diabetic, that is when you really want to use Intonia. Catch it before you have a problem. Use a natural herb to lower your blood sugar level, to lower your A1C levels that may keep you off drugs and medications to treat type 2 diabetes. Don't wait until the condition gets out of control and it takes more to get it back in control. Catch it early. Now, how do you have a healthier thyroid? 70% of all women tend to have a underactive thyroid and about 50% of men. It's not life-threatening. You're not going to die. That you feel terrible. You're not healthy. There are many side effects to an underactive thyroid. You gain weight very easily. You're always cold. You have an underactive immune system. You have vision problems. You have puffy face, swollen ankles. Your hair falls out in clumps sometimes. You see more hair on your pillow and in the shower. You need a healthy thyroid for your entire healthier body. The thyroid controls the metabolism of the body, the mechanism of the body. So how do you have a healthier thyroid? Well, of course, all we need iodine. Iodine is the mineral that is necessary to produce thyroxin, the hormone of the thyroid. Along with that, zinc and selenium are required to work with iodine to produce thyroxin. When doctors have diagnosed a patient with an underactive thyroid, more than likely they prescribe Synthroid, which is not the hormone thyroxin. It's T4. When the active form that is required for the thyroid is T3. By giving T4, it is expected 
to be converted to T3. The conversion process does not take place in many people. So you can take all the thyroxin you want and nothing ever feels different. I've had people tell me all the time, Terry, I've been on Synthroid for 20 years. Nothing has ever changed. I don't feel any different after I took it than I did before I took it. Because it's not the true hormone. They expect it to be converted into the T3 form, into thyroxin, but we need iodine, zinc, selenium, and an amino acid called L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine and iodine will produce T4 and T3 with the help of zinc and selenium and one other which I will clue in today on thyroid. Low thyroid is likely responsible for dementia. New research finds that older people with an underactive thyroid are at an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Researchers looked at the health records. Well, let me hang on right here. I just got a signal that we're going into a break. We're going to take a little bit of time off for some commercials and it'll, I'll come back in a few seconds and we can go back on with our topic today low thyroid and dementia, and what you can do about reversing the damage to your thyroid right after this, right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Nationally. Don't go away. This is a very, very important subject for both men and women. It's critical. Back right after this. And welcome back, my friends. We're back with Terry Talks Nutrition. And I'm Terry Naturally. If you want more information other than the radio show, go to my website, Terry Talks Nutrition. There you'll find all kinds of good, healthy information. You can listen to the radio show live, or you can listen to all the radio shows that have been archived and stored on our website. You can pull them up at your convenience. And listen to them anytime you want. Yeah, and you can subscribe to our newsletter that goes out every Friday to your email address. And you can also read all the newsletters that are archived on the e-newsletter section of our website. And a lot more information with a new newsletter coming to you every Friday. So take advantage of the website, terrytalksnutrition.com. There you can even buy my books. I have written about 13, 14 books. And you can read those books. And you can find them on the website. Also on Amazon. They're also available on Amazon. Now we're talking about low thyroid and dementia. And we have to have certain nutrients. It's not all based on drugs. You know, if your thyroid is malfunctioning, it may be because there are certain nutrients you need that you're not getting. Now, we as a nation are extremely deficient in iodine. And iodine is the mineral required for a healthy thyroid, along with L-tyrosine, an amino acid that complexes to iodine to produce the hormone of the thyroid called thyroxin. We also need the help of zinc and selenium to make the connection between iodine and L-tyrosine. These are natural nutrients. You know, the body needs nutrients. That's its fuel. 
but we're not eating the right food to provide the nutrients that our body requires to be healthy. So we are unhealthy. And when we're unhealthy, there are symptoms and signs that tell us that we are not getting the right nutrients. Now, we may not know what those are, but our body malfunctions when we don't get the right nutrients. And those malfunctions leave clues, signs, and symptoms. And then the drug companies have petitioned the FDA to make drugs to treat those symptoms, like thyroxin, Synthroid. When we would eat enough iodine, a good protein with those tyrosine or tyrosine and iodine in a formulation, in a tablet or capsule, with zinc and selenium, we can have a healthy thyroid. There are ways to make our body healthy if we have the right nutrients. Without the right nutrients, how can you build a, a, a building, a home, without the right tools? You can't. How do you build a body and maintain a healthy body if you don't have the right tools? And we don't get the right tools on a daily basis. And we don't store in our body those tools. When you see somebody building a house, they bring a construction vehicle or a hut that they get all their tools stored in at the end of the day. They come back the next morning, they open up the hut, get all the tools out, they go to work. Our tools come from the food we eat. When you get up in the morning, we eat a good, healthy diet to get some of those nutrients that we need in order to be healthy. We are not doing that. A sweet roll and a cup of coffee is a breakfast for some people, many people, unfortunately. Or like a bagel and a cup of coffee. Nothing. All you, all you ate was something to fill up your stomach with no, 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 no nutrition. None, zip, zero, nana. But we need those nutrients. And we know now that a low thyroid, from recent research, finds that older people with underactive thyroids we're at a very high increased risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Broda Barnes wrote a book many years ago. He has since passed away even many years ago. But he wrote a book, Iodine, The Unexpected Illness. And then he wrote another book called The, the Heart, Heart Disease which is an increased risk based on underactive thyroid. Thyroid controls many of our body functions, and our metabolism. It speeds it up or slows it down. So health, health researchers actually looked at health records of almost 8,000 people. The average age of these people were 75 who were newly, re, re, actually they were newly diagnosed with dementia and compared them to people of similar age who did not experience dementia or Alzheimer's disease to see who had a thyroid problem that could possibly lead to dementia. So the results of this observation, this study, People over the age of 65 with a history of low thyroid, technically called hypothyroidism, were 80%, 880, 80% more likely to develop impaired brain function, dementia, loss of memory, can't think. have lost their learning skills, 
80% more likely to develop dementia than people with normal thyroid function. This study actually shows and builds on previous research which found subclinical thyroid function, low thyroid levels, but no physical symptoms, is also a risk factor for dementia. So thyroid, underactive thyroid, commonly known as hypothyroidism. So we're going to stay here with this subject just a moment. I have a little bit of a clash on my system here, so give me a moment to get you back on track. So here's an observation that we have found that may give you the best thyroid function. Maybe you could try this now before you are required and prescribed a medication because food is extremely important for a healthy thyroid function. To improve your thyroid function, egg yolks. Egg yolks are so nutritious, so healthy, and all with the right kind of fats and proteins. Egg is a superior food, and right now probably one of the cheapest compared to other foods. One or two egg yolks or egg, whole eggs for breakfast. There are some days when I have six to ten eggs. I'll always start off the morning with three eggs, mostly in my drink, raw. I don't recommend that because um, I do it. I trust my egg source. But sometimes you could have a serious condition, sickness, from eating raw eggs, as the FDA said, so I just want to caution you. I do. I take it upon myself to, it's my choice. Then I may have one or two eggs poached in the afternoon for lunch. And if I get home and I get home late, I'm tired, I don't want to grill a steak. I don't want to take time to have a meal. So it's so easy to scramble three or four eggs. Um, So sometimes I have a, I have sometimes six to 10 eggs a day. It just depends on the day. I don't do it every day, but they're so healthy and nutritious. Egg yolks are a good source of two of the, of actually two of the nutrients required for healthy function of the thyroid. And that is selenium and iodine. One large egg contains 28% of the daily selenium requirement. Selenium is a mineral that is required for good thyroid healthy function. And it also contains 60% of the daily iodine requirement. Eggs also are a very good source of vitamins D, like dog, D, and vitamin E, which are also important for thyroid function. Or if you want to take a tablet or a capsule, you can try supplemental iodine and L-tyrosine and selenium. You can take 15 to 30 milligrams of iodine with 200 to 400 milligrams of L-tyrosine daily, along with 150 to 300 micrograms of selenium. This is the combination of formulation that you can use to support your thyroid function. But still take the eggs. Eggs are so nutritious. And you should look for three forms of iodine. When you're taking an iodine supplement, it should include potassium iodide, sodium iodide, and molecular iodine. Now, we also know that iodine protects the breast from cancer. Breast tissue prefers the molecular form of iodine. The thyroid prefers potassium iodide. And sodium iodide 
enhances iodine absorption. So three forms of iodine, that is the molecular iodine, potassium iodide, and sodium iodide, all sources of iodine, along with L-tyrosine and selenium, would make a re extremely beneficial formulation for supporting thyroid function and structure. Extremely, and then add your eggs. Eggs is phenomenal. I think your kids would be so much smarter and so much awake when going to school after eating two or three eggs, a couple of strips of bacon, maybe a, a piece of fruit, a glass of milk. Kids need fuel to go to school. Now, why do women need more carotenoids? What are carotenoids? Well, you know, there's a lot of beta carotene in carrots. That's a carotenoid. And carotenoids, for some reason, are very important for women. Women live longer than men. But women also have higher rates of autoimmune diseases and dementia. 88% of all autoimmune diseases are experienced by women. Two-thirds of all cases of dementia, including Alzheimer's disease, are experienced by women. Researchers looked at published research on plant compounds called carotenoids and concluded that women can benefit from significantly increased intake of two specific carotenoids. And those carotenoids are lutein, L-U-T-E-I-N, lutein, and xanthine, Z, like zebra, E-A-X, a-N-T-H-I-N. These two forms of carotenoids have a huge benefit, specifically on women. And other benefits as well. Lutein and xanthine are the only carotenoids in the retina of the eye and the primary carotenoids of the brain. Retinal levels of lutein and xanthine are on an average of 38% lower in women versus men. So it would behoove women to add more of these two carotenoids to their diet. Eating more foods, the bright colored vegetables are much higher in lutein and xanthine. And women are twice as likely to experience eye diseases such as age-related macular degeneration and, retina, and the retina of the eye requires good concentrations of, of the two carotenoids, lutein and xanthine. How, how, look how this all comes back to food. Eggs, vegetables, fruits that contain all these nutrients. Make sure your foundation of your health protocol is diet. Supplements are great to fill in the gap that you may be missing from the diet that you are consuming. But make every effort to change your diet for good, you don't change your diet to gain something, like gain better inflammation response or better weight loss, and then go back to eating like you did before. You have to change your diet for good forever.
It's a behavioral thing. You're not going to drop sugar, lose weight, feel better, your joints feel better, and then go back to eating sugar. The ideal diet is to have a good protein-based diet with lots of fats. Good fats. And very, very low carbohydrates. There are so many diseases that are cured by that type of diet. Hundreds and hundreds of studies on scientific websites that shows how these diets improve the quality of life, the quality of health in many, both men and women and children alike. So what about more carotenoids for the eyes? And more. So we just talked about these two carotenoids, lutein and xanthine. And what about an increased intake of these carotenoids, especially in women? Well, we know that the brain functions better. We know the eyes function better. We have less dementia, less Alzheimer's disease. So we want to get more of these carotenoids. And what else do they actually help to reduce? They have many, many benefits. Actually, for women, it's been proven that the reduced risk of early death delay bone loss, protect vision, preserve mental function. So combine 20 milligrams of lutein, you don't need very much, and 1,000 micrograms, that's, one mil, that's only one milligram, of xanthine, with the compounds from grapeseed extract called OPCs, vitamin A and, and zinc to take care of your eyes and your overall health, including nighttime vision. When you can't drive at night, you can't see the lines in the road. You don't see as well at night as you do during the day. It's the loss of nighttime vision. But that can be improved dramatically by taking a formulation of 20 milligrams of lutein, 1,000 micrograms of xanthine, the OPCs from grapeseed, vitamin A and zinc to take care of the eyes and overall health. There's so much benefit. Well, it won't be long, and all the kids will be going back to school. My granddaughter is just going off to college, first year of college, in the next few days. They're all heading back to school. They're all getting their books ready, their clothes ready. Everything, everything is getting ready, but is their health getting ready? Anybody doing about, what's, what, what, who's doing anything about their health? And we, the kids need more health than ever. So here's a back to school formulation. It's loaded with nutrients for kids. And it improves focus and concentration for kids four years and older. 60% of kids with ADHD are treated with medication. Kids are on drugs. Ritalin. Which can cause appetite loss. Weight loss. Sleep difficulties. Stomach aches and headaches. You can't get away from the side effects of drugs. They'll always be there. So if you can find something natural a natural alternative. A formulation that would contain phosphatidylsterine. It's 
Sounds like a scary word. But it's a lipid fat that has been clinically proven to increase attention and reduce impulsive behavior in children. In fact, in a study of children ages 4 to 19 with ADHD, 90% of participants improved after supplementation with phosphatidylsterine. It is one of the lipids we find in our brain. It helps our brain function better. And French grapeseed, which reduces the inflammation of the brain. A recent study found that high levels of inflammation in brains of infants, infants were associated with increased risk of ADHD later in life. Grapeseed has been shown to reduce the specific markers of inflammation associated with ADHD to near normal levels. So here's a great combination of nutrients to feed the brain for children ages four and over. Take 30 milligrams of phosphatidylsterine, 25 milligrams of French grapeseed extract with rhodiola, L-tyrosine, an amino acid, that's critical for thyroid function and for adrenal function. And then N-acetylcysteine, L-taurine, other, other amino acids, vitamin B6, DHA from fish oil, and DMAE by tartrate. These are nutrients, natural nutrients the body requires, the brain requires, in order to be healthy. These should come from our food. But unfortunately, kids don't eat right. Kids don't eat the right proteins and fats and get way, way, way too much carbohydrates and sugar. As I said, we're addicted to sugar. And as adults are addicted, they pass off the same diet to their kids. So unfortunately, kids don't get the nutrients they require to be healthy. So we're just about ready to leave for today's program. We only have a minute or two, and I don't have enough time to get into another subject. So I just want to make make it clear and, and remind you that everything you choose to do is going to influence who you are. You can even start with your thoughts, your beliefs, your goals. They all influence who you are. And it's the same with the diet you choose. We can choose a diet that is high in beneficial nutrients that the body requires to be healthy and slows down the aging process, slows down the mechanism of actions that you have better health longer, better quality of life longer. Or we can eat junk foods that undermine our health and escalate the aging process. People get older faster. There are people in their 40s that can't keep up with people in their 80s. And there are people that are in their 80s and they outshine those people that are in their 40s. It's all a matter how you take care of your car, right? And it's also how you take care of your body. People feel they have a financial investment in their car, so they want to take care of it. Well, you have a bigger financial investment in your body. Take care of your body. Take care of your health. So over the next week, you have many choices to make. Make better choices. Choose better foods. And choose to eat three meals a day. And a good, healthy breakfast of proteins and fats. Lower your amount of sugar and carbohydrates. And with that, my friends, say a prayer for this crazy, insane world. I, got, I bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country.